Omega Zero X Corner. This is a pack of Sea Raiders on our tail, sir. My hands are numb. Concentrate, sir. They're closing in. Okay, give me scan six zero Charlie. They're coming head on by the tracers. Okay, switch this baby around. Let's shake him up a little. Tracer at five o'clock. Watch your tail, Sam. Here we go. Steady. Now! What's with the lights? It could be a central power lead. Don't start on me, Sam. Give me a hand. With me, Mr. Fats, let's get out the force field. We haven't lost it. I'll tie in the auxiliary power. Got any wire? I made it. Give me some. How long was I under? I call your son is older than you are. <laughs> Hope he turned out better than me. Done it, sir. Fire, fire. The jump power is done, sir. Give me full throttle on the front vector and check the force field. Full throttle, sir. Sam, that's the mothership. Force field, sir. Lost it. One Alpha 65. One Alpha 60. One Alpha 52. 51. Ignite the fusion bolts! Reset this diffusion reaction. Sir, we've received new orders while you were under. It's bad news, sir. We're being diverted. To where? Exarbia. Exarbia? Where's that? The planet. They've had an accident. They had a high security lab there. The Federation requested you especially. Very funny. <laughs> There's an order, sir. All our leave time has been cancelled. They said you'd understand. They said I was going home. Maybe next year, sir. Prepare for hyperspace. Hyperspace? Yes, sir.
Zarbius, sir. Prayer for Doc. Searcher 7 to Zarbo 5. Men, please. Roger, Searcher 7, we see you. Hold your course. Roger, Zarbio. Holding steady. Where do you want us? Enter code 65, cipher 2 Papa. We'll strobe you in. Gordon Hauser, head of research. Mike Covey. Of course. This is my assistant, Dr. Glazer. Barbara knows more about genetic synthesis than anyone else alive. Genetic synthesis? Sounds like fun. I've heard good things about you, Commander Covey. Mike. Good to be here in your pleasant custody, Commander and I. Let's get started. Good. Follow me. I'll show you around. an A-priority high-security research facility. Actually, it's a scientist's dream. We have the best of everything here. Except real estate. Well, they put us here for two reasons. One, because we're working on a bacteria that's unique to this planet. And two, because we can take experimental risks here in isolation that would be unthinkable back home. What kind of research do you do here? Genetic engineering. Bacteriological, mostly. Our objective is to create an extremely productive, entirely new food source. And I would say that we've done that, too. Uh-huh. Tell me about the accident. Sorry. Sorry. Tracy, would you go find Jimmy, please, and have him come to the lab? Sure. Sorry. It's OK. You're a new face around here. We don't often get new faces. That's the truth. In here. Okay, close your eyes. You can get a nice tan here on your day off. Takes about 20 seconds. What is this, microwave? It kills every living thing on your body. Keep it clean, that's the rule. Nothing messy goes in, nothing messy comes out. Isn't there a cancer risk? Life here is full of risks. Watch your step. Welcome to the Garden of Eden. We play God here. We create life. The only trouble is, some of the life we create just won't behave. Mike Colby, Cal Tenbergen, Chief of Bacteriology. He's a true genius, one of the few. Nice to meet you. Thought we'd leave the mess until you got here. Heard you like messes. Any sign of isolatory psychosis among the staff? Not on our staff. Wasn't staff, Colby. Something got loose. What got loose? Subject 20. An experiment? We created a little monster, I'm afraid. Nothing to get excited about. See for yourself. It's in here. Meet subject 20. 
Who put it in the incubator? It put itself in the incubator. What is it? A metamorph. A what? It's a metamorphic mutation. <coughs> it's like an ordinary mutant in that it's genetically different from its parent. A metamorph goes at one better. It keeps right on changing its genetic structure, mutating again and again, <coughs> even as it grows and matures. It's a genetic wildcat. It's totally unpredictable. Best to uh, keep that closed. What is the gooey stuff? It's a cocoon. Interesting, huh? Is it changing form in there like a caterpillar? It's changing into something, all right. God knows what. Don't expect a butterfly. This little thing did all that damage. That little thing has a lot of energy. Its metabolic rate is 50 times that of any other known organism. Then we should get rid of it. If we drop a few cc's of hydrocyanic acid in there, we have a belly-up metamorph, and I can go home. I don't think you understand, Colby. I understand perfectly, Doctor. You're working outside of your charter. Scientific research often takes us into uncharted territory. I'm not talking about territory, Doctor. I'm talking about strange little creatures that kill. I've got a motto. If it moves and it's not one of us, shoot it. Brilliant. Just what we need. I'm not joking, Doctor. I know when to play the game and I know when to bail out. That thing is trouble. I can smell it. Termination is not a solution. He's right, Commander. Give us a chance to fill you in. Wait one night. How come you're so much more convincing than he is? I have such beautiful ideas. Shall we discuss it over dinner? Hungry? I'm getting that way. Jimmy, we can clean it up now. OK, no problem. Francie, why don't you join us? Sure. If a little terror does anything funny, give me a call. Security. Earl, it's Jimmy in the lab. How's it there yet? Not yet. When he gets there, uh, would you tell him to give me a call? Tell him his baby's waking up. Okay.
Genetics. James, this is Hauser. Doc, this thing's moving around. It's acting strange. Is it kind of pulsating like it's breathing hard? Yeah. Well, that's perfectly normal. Don't let it worry you. One of us will come right down. Okay. Thanks, Doc. Right. Tracy, run down to genetics and make sure everything's okay. Sure. And if it's anything interesting, let me know. Hate to miss it. Where's the whipped cream? What? Strawberry shortcake always comes with whipped cream. This is strawberry shortcake? I thought it was one of Cal's genetic disasters. <coughs> Come on, Barb. I can't eat this crap without whipped cream. Look, do you want to whip up some of the Polly Girl Guy's dairy base? It looks like whipped cream, sort of. Actually, it looks like puree puke, if you want to know the truth. The galactic food crisis strikes again. Suffer. What does Subject 20 have to do with the work on the food crisis? It's a genetic mutant. A proto-B binder like all the other experiments, except this one got a little out of hand. A little. And what's proto-B? You know anything about genetics? Doctor, I wouldn't know a gene from a jelly bean. No, I'm just a soldier of fortune. Proto-B is a local bacteria. Protosporilla bacterium. We call it Proto-B for short. Earl, punch up the file 7063. Proto-B gets its energy from light, available chemicals, and most efficiently by consuming its own dead. It lives in a perfectly balanced, closed system. No predators, no prey. Until we got here. Proto-B reproduces at an unbelievable rate. <coughs> it's sinful the way it multiplies. You splice it to another organism, there's just no stopping it. We spliced it to an algae and got a foodstuff that grows so fast. I swear you couldn't kill it if you tried. All of our work here involves splicing proto-B genes with the genes of other organisms. So actually, uh, Subject 20 started out just like all the others. Then Subject 20 is the result of a genetic splicing between a proto-B bacteria and another organism. Exactly. What is the other organism? Well, is it uh, animal or... Vegetable. Well, come on. Was it an animal? Yes. No! Yes! Do I hear a maybe? Ask Gordon what happened to Annie. Barbara, for God's sake! Who's Annie? Ask him! Barbara, I'm warning you! Tell me about Annie. This is not the time or place to be discussing this. 
difference does it make? Annie used to work with me. She was my... Shut up! Shut up, damn you! Shut up! Shut up! She did what? I'll explain all this to you when the time is right. She what? She died. You can call it that. What would you call it? She died. That's all. What in the hell is going on around here? No, I suppose you'll think we're up to something evil. Is that it, Commander? Evil? Hell no, I think you're crazy. I think this is a nut house. What is it? Tracy. Let's get out of here. Men of order, where is it? I don't know. Well, find the damn thing. Hang on, he's still alive. That's impossible. Give me a hand. I want to get him up and we can see him. He can't be alive, Cal. Look at him, for God's sakes. What? I don't know how that's going to happen. We should have killed it when we had the chance. We're going to find too much at stake here. Well, tell that to Jimmy. You go find it and keep looking. Don't worry, sir. I'll find it. I'll find that half-breed bastard. No cerebrum. Traumatized collateral sulcus. Brain death. There's no doubt about it. But there's life in the cerebellum. The heart's still pumping. The body tissue is viable. He is alive. Technically, anyhow. What if it's not in here? It's got to be in here. This is a sterile chamber. If a germ can't get out, there's no way that thing can get out. I can't do anything with him here. I'm going to take him down in the bedroom. Get away from me, will you, my genetic cesspool? This is it, you goddamn ding whopper. Be careful. Let me know if you find the rest of them, will you? I'm beginning to think it's not in here. Don't be a fool, Brian. How could I get out? It's invisible. my kid, I can't find it anywhere. We gotta tell Colby about Annie. I can't deal with it anymore. No, let Gordon do it. He knows what he's doing. I think 
monkeys in over his head. And I think you should get some sleep. Need any help? I'll let you know. Not yet. Why don't you turn in? You need to blank it all out for a while. Tracy, I'm sorry about Jimmy. It's okay. Good night. Show up by tomorrow, we're gonna have to dismantle the lab piece by piece. You know that? It's gonna be a nightmare, a damn nightmare. Good night, Gordon. What's good about it? Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. I put you in number two. Hey, thanks. Stay alert tonight, Earl. Don't worry, I know my job. Sam, are you all right? All right, sir. best troubleshooter in the Federation. Yeah, I heard that too. Want to uh, see some trouble? No, sir, I put you in number number two.
Shanna, this is my goddamn steam bath. I'm sorry. Get out! Baxter, you're beautiful. Oh, boy. I just came down to see who's here. Well, now you know, so get out. The morning's belonged to me in this loony bin, and I plan on keeping it that way. You shouldn't be wandering around with that thing on the loose. I thought it was locked up in the lab. We don't know where it is. And you came to warn me? Whoever. Thanks. You know something? You look like you could use the steam bath. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I had a hard night. <laughs> so fair is fair. Get naked. We don't get many new faces around here. That's one thing I like about my job. I'm always the new face. And there's some things I don't like about my job. Like what? Well, like this, for example. This happened in Pytor. Sam and I ran across a caravan of nomadic dindars, you know, from Titan. Anyway, it all started when Sam and I rather tactlessly accused a dindar commando of being a maggoty, fat-ass, grease-licking dung bunny. That was close. I'd have retired. Oh, no, you don't. You're staying right here with me. What is that thing? What will be what? All right. What happened? Your metamorph attacked us. Where is it? Inside. You didn't kill it, did you? Hell no. Listen. It's growing. It's getting bigger by the minute. What is that thing, Hauser? Proto B and what? Just stick with your charter, Colby. Just figure out a way to trap it. You figure it out. I'm not going back in there. Hey, easy, easy. You want to know what I want to know? I'd like to know what you and Tracy were doing in their dress like that. Explaining your scars, no doubt. Venting steam. That's impossible. The skylight. It's busting out. You still think we're running around trying to cover up some embarrassing mistake? Just do your job. You want to help? Of course. Now, you and Brian and I will go outside and we'll track it. Brian, get to Sam 104 and bring it to the decompression chamber. We can use it. Tracy, go to the control room and track us on the outside scanner. Barbara, go find Cal and go to work on Jimmy. Learn everything you can about a metamorph and what makes it tick. Okay, now where's Earl? Probably manning his monitors, looking for the dingwopper. The what? Dingwopper, that's what he calls it. Well, okay, let's get going. I sure hope you know what you're doing. I don't have the slightest idea. I go on hunches. Right. Let's go bag ourselves a dingwopper. Changes itself, it changes us. What do you think, Barbara? Hey, good luck, you guys. Don't worry, we'll give all the dirty work to the Sam 104 here. They switch you off when life is good, switch you back on when they're up to their noses and life spitter dropping. Right you are, Tin Man. found that as long as we make a gradual decompression, we can stay outside for up to an hour or so without too much difficulty. After that, it gets kind of risky. Nitrogen narcosis? Similar to it, yes. The nitrogen in the blood gets all foamy, forms a lot of little tiny bubbles. The effect is uh, quite dramatic. An instant high leading to euphoria. The trouble is you like it so much you forget to come back in. 
We almost lost Earl once about a mile from here. We found him naked and eating the sand. He thought it was sugar. Here it comes. This is the analysis of the gelatinous tissue. This should tell me what it's made of. Look at this. This is extraordinary. Barbara, look at this. Cal. Cal, what's it doing? Dividing. Reproducing. Don't you see? This is all beginning to make sense. Barbara, this stuff is almost pure protein. What we're seeing is a breakdown of a complex, sophisticated creature, a human being, into a simple elementary organism whose sole function is to grow and reproduce. That's why it kept him alive. <coughs> yes. Jimmy's tissue has been going through a radical metamorphosis. Like every human being, he's made up of millions of specialized cells. Cells with a unique function. A cell from an eye is very different from a cell from a toe, right? Of course. But ever since his attack, all his specialized cells have been changing. Until all the differences have been erased. Until every cell is identical. Until there is no difference between his eye and his toe. Until we have... Why? Ask the metamorph. Ask that pathetic, unformed, malignant issue of our own stupidity. Ask it why. He's heading to the research center. Hurry, Mike, hurry. It's changing again. Slowly! 
the telecom. We thought all hell had broken loose. Mike, look at this. The computers. Damn. Looks like the Transcam, the Comcam, the 790, and the Mayday box. Man, this is bad news. This creature is intelligent. How do you figure that? It's simple. It destroyed all our contact with the outside world, our launch pad control, and yet it left us. <coughs> Air to breathe, food to eat, and a temperature we can live in. Why? It wants to keep us alive. It wants to use us for some reason. If it is intelligent, have you thought about trying to communicate with it? That's about the stupidest damn idea I've heard all day. No offense, Barb. Sorry I asked. It's in the med room. What's it doing? Hang on. Food. It's reducing us to a simple protein. It wants to use us as food. Why doesn't it just eat us and get it over with? It's working on a permanent food supply. It's planting a garden. And we're the seeds. It's using human tissue? Our tissue? Yes. It injects human tissue with Proto-B and its saliva. Proto-B goes to work, invading every cell, altering the genetic structure, reconstructing the body to suit its needs. You mean it's genetically altering us? Yes, in order to establish a simple, stable, inexhaustible food supply. How horrible. Consider why we came here in the first place. Help me! <laughs> Germs. Do you know why that creature does this? Instinct. Proto-B is a result of millions of years of evolution. 
We have no way of knowing what's hidden in its genetic coding. The metamorph is only half Proto B. What's the other half? Tell him, Cal, please. Our metamorph is a genetic fusion of a proto V cell and a human being. You heard us talk about Andy Mask. Well, we knew we could create the cell, but not the womb to grow it in. Annie volunteered. She knew all the dangers. It was an implant. Exactly. We spliced the genetic structure of Proto-B to the genes of a human cell. Whose? It's Gordon's. This whole experiment was his idea. And in the lab, we used Gordon's altered cell to fertilize an egg. A manny. And when mitosis began, we surgically re-implanted the egg into Annie's uterus. She was to carry it to term. Except the term turned out to be two weeks. And it killed her. It was his most daring experiment. Rather too daring, I should think. Tracy, it's as if they're not listening to Cal. He's telling them the thing's intelligent, and they go right on insisting the only way to deal with it is to blow it up or something. What else can we do? I think we should try to communicate with it. I know it's far-fetched, but it might work, and we don't have that many options. Come on, that's crazy, Barbara. Listen, the point is, if we go on attacking it, it's going to go on attacking us. It's called cognitive retribution, and the only way to stop it is to break the cycle. Maybe it's already got what it wants. Maybe all we have to do is to walk out of here. But look what happened to Dr. Hauser. No, it's too risky. But I'm sure we could break the cycle if we tried to communicate with it. Intelligent beings can communicate. You don't need language. Look at any foreigner away from home or a, a mother and her baby. It's not the same. But if it is as intelligent as Cal says, there's at least a chance it might if there is a chance, then we have to try. We'll have to tell the others. No, you saw how they reacted. We'll have to do this ourselves. Are you okay? Are you sure you want to go through with this? Okay. 
Wish me luck. We have no weapons, and we mean no harm. Can you understand me? Either my words or my thoughts. Is it possible you understand but can't answer me? If you do understand me, please give me some sign, some gesture. into the computers. My God, if it's keyed into the computers, we've got it made. some information.
How did you know? I've seen her before, sir, many times. You've seen too much. Let's see how my wildly mutating little cells get along with yours. Gotcha. Son of a bitch! Wait! We can't. It's all over the life support system. Blasted, we blast ourselves. Okay, we're gonna have to wire for outside help. Can you get to the Mayday box? I'll do whatever I can. Cover me. Tracy, you stay out of here. Watch the cocoon. I don't like this. The cocoon's all over the transmitter. If that thing starts to hatch, you get me out of here. Don't worry about that. Think the craziest damn things are elegant. You know that? Ryan, Cal has a solution. Get out of there. Damn, wait a sec. Something just shorted. Hold on, let me fix it. Ryan, get out of there. Don't worry. Cancer, my, and my cancer could kill the mutant. I thought if I could trick it, if I could get it to swallow any of my malignancy, my cancer's tissue, that would be it. There's one chance left. I have a large metastatic growth, a tumor. Here on my liver. I want you to cut the tumor out and... Cal, I'm not a surgeon. 
and feed it to the mutant. I can't do that. I'm dying, Mike. The cancer will get me in any event. Cal, I don't know how to do that. I'll teach you. Where is she? Where's the morphine? She'll be here. We can't wait. Start now. Cut here. Cut shallow at first. Then work your way deeper. Work as fast as you can. Cal, we can't do it without the morphine. What if you pass out? How will I know what to do? If I pass out, you just go right for the tumor. Cal. God damn it. God help me. Here? No. Higher. Don't touch the celiac axis. Do you feel it? Oh, man, I can feel it. We did it, Cal. We got it. Cal!